Floss Tube. Welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday the 30th of May of the year 2021 and this is Floss Tube number 68. I had to check. Um, <laughs> what a week it's been. If you follow me on Instagram you will know that we had a major dilemma on Monday. Uh, I spent five hours down A and E, which is not really where I wanted to be with the whole pandemic and everything going on. But Ellie decided that when we were going shopping on Monday, um, we go down Aldi because Aldi is usually pretty quiet. It's never ever really that busy, so we kind of good at keeping away from everyone, and we're always fully masked and all you know the necessaries. But there's um. There's a building right next door to Aldi's and what we do is we cut through the car park because it's just quicker that way. And Ellie decided she was going to do this little hop off the curb with both feet. And there was a bunch of moss on the tarmac and everyone, who's anyone knows that moss is slippy if you try and land on it or whatever. She went flying, her left leg just went straight out in front of her. Her right leg buckled underneath her and she slammed down straight on top of her right ankle. So I had to scrape her off the floor, sit her on the curb for a couple of minutes and just kind of give her a minute. Because if it's a sprain, you give it a few minutes and you can sort of weight bear on it. If it's not, you can't. So we, I think I sat there for about 10 minutes and by that time it was already ballooning and it looked exactly like mine did three was it three years ago 2018 yeah three years ago this year I did mine where well, time flies but it looked exactly like mine did just without the bruising so the dilemma was getting her home I wasn't going to ring a taxi and go to any &E from there because she was muddy because she landed in all this moss and dirt and whatever so I gave Tyler a ring he was out delivering his papers really quick bring me your bike <laughs> and he asked what for Ellie's had an accident so he came over and managed to get her to stand on her other foot so I kind of shuffled her onto the bike just kind of dangle your leg leave it wherever's comfortable just don't put it on the pedal and I pushed her all the way home <laughs> that was hard work I tell you what that felt like a right workout for me um we got her home. I sat her down for, you know, half an hour with an ice pack. The swelling was awful. The pain was awful. I don't think I've ever heard her scream. Not quite like that anyway. So that was sort of a hint when she did it. So the decision was made about 11 o'clock. Right, okay, we're going to ring a taxi. We're going to go down A&E. I'm not going to bother an ambulance. You know, I can get her there. That's not an issue. We spent about an hour, an hour and a half before we got seen initially. And we were seen by an emergency nurse practitioner. Asked what the problem was, what she'd done, how she'd done it. And then he took a quick look and he said, right, okay, well, it's going to be straight to x-ray. And from there, we have to be escorted because the pandemic and everything they don't want people just wandering around the hospital so we got escorted to A&E she had an x-ray we were escorted back where we had to wait yeah that was another good couple of hours they saw her the same nurse practitioner sat down with us and he said I will be honest with you when I first saw it I didn't think it was broken he said but now I've seen the x-rays she did a good job Apparently, it's called a triplane fracture of her right ankle, which is quite common in children between the ages of 10 and 17, I think. But it's quite a bad fracture. That's why I referred to it. It's a good job. Um, apparently, these fractures have a tendency to slip. I didn't know that. So we were sent to casting. They put a cast below the knee and onto the foot with a window down the front, just in case her foot, that's my seat being, just in case her foot swelled anymore to allow for that. And it was only a soft cast, not a plaster of Paris one. I've never had a soft cast before, but, and he advised us that we would have to wait for a virtual fracture clinic phone call the following day. 
So we went home, ibuprofen, paracetamol, all the works. We get a phone call the next day and the lady from Fracture Clinic says, we need you to come in tomorrow. Okay, I thought it was only going to be a phone call appointment because she's in cast and that's going to be four to six weeks. She said, no, we need you to come in tomorrow. Okay, fine. So I took her down again on Wednesday. What a day that was as well. We were The appointment was quarter to ten in the morning. We were there sort of half past nine. Um, we saw the doctor in the fracture clinic and he said, I need her to have a CT scan. I'm going to try and get it done now. I'm going to give them a ring and see if they can just kind of fit you in because they do have like regular appointment people. He came back just 10 minutes later and said, I've got you in. You need to head down to CT. Poor Ellie. By the time we got out of the hospital, she had a blister on her right hand just from walking on the crutches because they've only given the elbow ones, not the full length arm, the armpit ones. So she had a CT. Apparently, you have to be careful with these fractures that nothing's moved or it's out of place, anything like tiny or something like that. It came back okay anyway. And he said, now I'm going to send you to the casting room again. She's going to have that cast removed. And a huge full length one that is literally not far from her bottom. She got to choose the colour, but that was about it. And the bloke in the casting room said, well... If I'd have seen her on Monday, she would have had the full cast then because of the type of fracture it is. The triplane fracture is three fractures all around the ankle. From what I could gather, now I'm no doctor and I'm not, you know, I'm no good with bones and stuff. You've got the main bone that comes down to the ankle and then you've got this little one. She's got a fracture in this one and two in this one. All I know is it's called a triplane fracture and things have a tendency to move hence the bigger cast and we have to go back every week now for the next four weeks just to keep making sure it's all in the right place so we didn't get home till about half 12 quarter to one on Wednesday so this week has just been chaotic to say the least there's been tears there's been just tiredness because she's not sleeping very well bless her it's very very uncomfortable I haven't had a cast on since I was like 15, so um, her foot's stuck in one position. She's supposed to sit with it up for 90% of the day. That's hard. Any other time when she can do what she likes, sitting down in one position, staying there for a good couple of hours is easy. Put a cast on her and for some reason it all goes hit the window and she just wants to be on her feet all the time. But we're working on it. So... This week's dilemma has impacted my cross stitching this week. I mean, I've lost mm, two days, sort of, because by the time I've got home, I just, I'm exhausted. I didn't feel like it. And who would think that just sitting in A&E can be tiring for five hours? But it is. So I'm just going to crack on with the stitching I've got. Thank you to everyone who sent lovely well wishes to Ellie and wishing her well and hoping it heals fast. Um, <laughs> I share her all the messages you leave. so And it always puts a smile on her face. So that's lovely because she, she gets a bit teary from time to time that the pain's getting to her. But I've just said, just take that as a sign it's healing. <laughs> anyway, so this week I've only touched three projects. Not as much as I would have liked, but I mean, I haven't even finished my Magical Stitches prompts. I've still got one more to do this afternoon. And I forgot to take a picture for the one I did before. So I'm just kind of wondering how I'm going to play that now. But unless I do another 300, but it's Sunday. I've got plenty of time. The kids have been fed, watered. They're happy, so... I can do what I like after doing this video now. Um, yeah, where am I going to start? We'll go with the first one, Animal Kingdom. And because she's in a massive cast as well, she can't get up. She can't go to the toilet by herself. Going up the stairs alone is a workout. Um, I'm just glad that even though she's in pain and not very comfortable, 
She hasn't lost a sense of humour. Me and her have been in stitches several times, but I'll fill you all in on that in a minute. Um, the first one is my Heaven and Earth design mini The Amazing Animal Kingdom artwork by Amy Stewart. This is for my... I apologise about the light. It is... We've had awful weather this last week in the UK and yet yesterday and today. Blistering. So yeah, this is for my best friend Kelly. Where is it? I have drawn only 585 stitches, but it's 585 towards the finish. That was something else I meant to say. I asked everyone last week whether they would prefer a before picture. So you can kind of hopefully, hopefully see the difference between last week and this week. So I'll put that up somewhere here now. And then this is where we're at now. It is filling in slowly. It is filling in slowly, but this is on 25 count 1 over 1 4 plus. And it's looking fairly good. So that's that one. That is my Stitch Around Iceland as well, but I've only done 585 stitches this week. It's also my monthly bookshelf. I haven't worked out how many I've done on that. I am behind on May's bookshelves. I was hoping to get it done this week. I made a good start on Sunday thinking, that's it, I'm set for the week now. I know what I've got to do and I'm going to do it. And then Ellie throws a spanner in the works and everything goes out the window. So I've got a, a little bit of catching up on my projects to do with the monthly bookshelves. Let's do Once Upon a Fairy Tale next, which is this one. This is uh, another Heaven and Earth design, super size Once Upon a Fairy Tale, just the regular colours. And I am just finishing this corner right here, which means the top row of pages will be done. Now, I'm going to tell you how many stitches I've done. And I've already told you my stitching this week has been hampered, but you're all going to look at me. I know, because when I added them up, I went, there's no way I've done that many this week. <laughs> it just, But I've done 1,614 figure that out anyway i will put a before picture in here so you can see just where i was last week if not last week the week before i can't remember if i worked on it last week anyway oh i'm liking the camera being a bit lower i don't think i put it low enough today let's there we go i've been filling in it's like a, um, a coppery colour. It's 300. So I've been filling in 939 in the sky because I've done all, all of this was like this last week. So I've been filling in all of this. So the 939 has gone in there as well and down there. And then I've been filling in 300 on the front of the, on the archway part. This is also on 25k, 1 over 1 full cross. And I, I'm so excited to finish that last page, just because that's an accomplishment, a whole row. Anyway, that, um, magical stitches, stitch 100 stitches in red, blue or green. Well, I did 939, I think that's royal blue. Um, and stitch on a whip that contains an object you might find in the Old West. I went for penalty stitches on that one. It was just easier. Anyway, my last and final project that I worked on this week. Wow, that's hot. Is this one. This is my Disney Villains piece from Zana's Cross Stitch on Etsy. I'm still around here. I will put a before picture in of where I was the last time you saw it. And I'm hoping you'll be able to see the difference because it's a lot of white. I say white, it's um, 3865. It's like um, antique white, I think they call it. Anyway, this is where I am now. You can literally just 
I see all that white. There you go. All that 3865, it goes all the way up here and over there. And I've started this um, blue colour here. This is also on 25, Kate. <laughs> one over one full cross. And it's looking so good. And I'm, when I was ordering the threads for the first page, I thought I ordered them all. I haven't. There's a red colour, so I'm going to have to order it. I believe it's 321. Don't quote me on that. But when I was looking for them, it wasn't in my thing. But anyway, that's all looking good. And the amount of stitches I did on that this week was 570. A lot of antique white. Most of it was that antique white. Um, that's it stitching wise. I have a tiny, tiny little bit of haul. Last week I started the conversation by saying I owed a huge thank you to Abra for buying me two coffees last week. And I said, and that brings me into the haul, but then I never finished explaining why. Squirrel brain. And here is, what the hey, why? Well, hey, I have now bought all the glass beads. I'm taking it there. Take it over here, crinkle's not so bad. But enough so you can still hear it. I love the crinkle. Oh, it's stuck. Hope you pop. Yeah, I'll show better outside the packet, I think. Come on, behave. Anyway, you can see the seed beads for the lace, the rose and lace pattern I bought for my mum. So that's what uh, they are. And I bought all the yellow colours, the DMCs, for the yellow roses. So I was a little shocked, a little, just because of the orange. But I'm kind of thinking, yes, that's shading, but that'll only be like in really small areas. But all the other yellows are there. So thank you, Abra. You bought my beads and my thread. I've just got to order all the greens now for the leaves. And whatever colour I'm going to go, well, it's going to be white, but I might go B5200. I had two suggestions for fabric. I asked you guys to kind of give me a hint on what colours. I'm no good with fabric, not yet anyway. I've had two suggestions. One like grey, uh, a grey, which as soon as I've said it, I was like, actually, yeah, that would look really good. And then Brianna. I couldn't think of your name for a second, sorry. Um, she said Periwinkle. Now, I've heard of Periwinkle, but I didn't know what colour it was. So I did have to go and look. And that's gorgeous too. So I'm stuck between the two. So what I might do is buy them both. Or buy one of each colour. And then stitch it. A second time for my brother and then maybe a third time for my sister when I finally get round to um, starting them. Well, it won't be a maybe. If I do my brother one, I'll do my sister one. That sounded bad. <laughs> no, of course I'd do a one. Um, but it's because I'm stuck on fabric. And then I'll just have to see which looks nicer when I'm finished. That sounds bad as well, because it sounds like I'm going to palm off the one I don't like on my brother. No, it's not like that. <laughs> it's just, they're both nice colours. And it's like, do I go for mottled, or do I go for a very subtle mottle, or just a plain, like, grey and a plain periwinkle? The periwinkle's like, it's like a, a purpley blue. It's like, a, I, would, I think I would sort of call it lilac, sort of. Yeah, they're both lovely colours and it's just, I've spent all afternoon yesterday, this is part of where my other stitching time went, looking for fabric as well. My fringe is really annoying me. I think I'm going to just chop it and leave it. I'm not going to grow it out because it's irritating me. Anyway, 
that's it stitching wise this week i'm sorry it wasn't very much but i'm hoping this week coming ellie will be settled a bit more into her um cast <laughs> get used to it a bit more so she'll be less dependent on me at the moment we shall see but i will get some stitches and i'm just not sure how much this next week come in i've got bookshelf challenges to finish i'm probably a good 1500 stitches shy of finishing those and then obviously it's june on tuesday i can't believe we're in the sixth month nearly anyway never mind thank you as always to you guys for stopping in and visiting with me while i share my cross stitch projects that i've worked on this week and my progress you're amazing as always um, if you're not already following me on Instagram, I leave my Facebook, my Instagram and my buy me a coffee in the description box. Oh, yes, there's something I wanted to say. Um, quite often, you lot find it as well, you get like recommendations on your feed in YouTube and this week it dropped me a recommendation and... I instantly watched, instantly subscribed, and I've caught up with all the videos. She's only on, I think, Flush Tube number four at the moment. Anyway, she's a lovely, lovely young lady in Australia with her daughter. She's got an amazing name. Her name is Liesl. And I even told her that as well. Her name is beautiful. Yeah, it's Liesl and Gwen, her daughter. Um... Lee Stitch, I think her channel name is. I am going to link it in the description box down below because I think you should check her out. She's absolutely, she has got an amazing amount of whips and fabric. <laughs> you should go and check her out, seriously. I have enjoyed, I know Linda's 144 Hobbies has already subscribed as well, just because she's lovely, absolutely lovely. So go and check her out. So she'll be in the description box along with all my social media and everything else. Um, have an amazing week guys take care stay safe and i will see you in the next one bye guys